let's chat a little bit more about the standard control panels found on many of our image photograph printers. Here we have the IPF 6450 series. Uh, we'll just give you a quick overview here. Uh, before I get started, the printer is Energy Star compliant. So if the printer is sleeping, that's fine. Let it sleep. Don't worry about turning the printer off and on all the time. Uh, when it's sleeping, very low power drain, just a few watts at best. And the important aspect of allowing to sleep is the printer will be able to cycle up, maintain its print heads, maintain its operational status, so the printer is ready to go anytime it should receive a job. So sleeping is better than off uh, for this for these uh, for these devices here. So let's we'll start with the lights here. There's a data light and a message light. They're both off now, of course. When the data light is on, it's blinking or it's solid, it means the device is receiving data to the printer. The 6450 um, has a hard drive built into the system, 160 gig or 250 gig hard drive. So that, that offers many benefits to the system as you flow jobs to the printer that are actually stored on the hard drive. It can be stored in the main mailbox. They can be s stored in a named mailbox uh, for printing later or reprinting, things of that nature. So the data light will blink as data is flowing into the device. The message light is a printer alerting you there's some type of message on the display of the printer that you should go ahead and uh, acknowledge uh, and it indicates that to you sure. by lighting up the message light. There's the media set, so okay. there's a cut sheet, yeah. or roll fed, so right now roll fed is current operational status of the device. Yeah. If this one is lit, obviously it's set to receive a piece of cut sheet media, yeah. and it will not be able to print from the roll fed until you go ahead and load roll and switch it back to roll feed operation. Yeah. There's the load, the feed, and the cut button. These are obviously directly related to the media. Yeah. There's the main menu button, there's the back button, that'll take you back as you drill through menus, you can back, back your way back up to the main menu. Yeah. There's a navigate function, which is like a help key, stop, depending on your function initiating or currently operational, mm -hmm. stop will cease that function. Mm -hmm. Job is printing, you want to stop it, you can hit stop. Request if you want to cancel the job, you know, those types of things. Power button, of course, lit. Yep. Uh, this is your menu navigator, if you will, yep. and, and OK acknowledgement button. Yep. So let's look at the load, feed, and cut button. If you press load, let's say do you want to load roll paper or manual paper, and we covered that in a previous video. Yep. So if I didn't want to make that selection, I hit back, takes me back to the menu. Right? If I want to feed, I push the feed button. It says paper position can be changed. I press in the up arrow, down arrow, mm -hmm. right? Up arrow returns the paper back. Yep. Feed arrow down, feeds the paper. Yep. So a very common application of where the feed button might be used is you hold down the feed button, advance the media, mm -hmm. media advances out of the system. So this might be very helpful. So for example, here, here's a roll of media we loaded earlier and it looks like it took some ink residue or to the media. Yeah. Obviously, if you're printing, you probably don't want this in your print itself. Yeah. So you can feed the board, and then you can initiate a cut right here. Yeah. It says cut the paper. You can say yes, and it'll go ahead and trim that media for you. Yeah, I might as well do that right now. So I'll say yes, and then you'll see the, the cutter advance here. Right? Cutting, roll cutter, and the Perfect. print drops. Yeah. And then the print drops, and you go ahead and waste this. Or sometimes you might load a new roll of media, and there might be some tape residue here or the bleeding edge is damaged, you don't want that in your print. So that's a good way to go ahead initiating some media advancing and then cutting to have a nice clean leading edge and clean media ready for your print. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the menu options. As again as I mentioned earlier, there's the paper menu by default selection, there's the ink menu, there's the job menu, and there's a settings adjustments menu. Okay. So when you go to the paper menu, you hit OK, you can load paper this function as well as well as loading it from the buttons. You can eject the media, you can change your paper types, yeah. change your paper sizes, yeah. manage remaining roll, it's set for off. The manage remaining roll function, I believe, if you initiate it on here, it what this allows it. you to do, it barcode the media. So as you go to load a new roll of media, right. that roll media, uh, you'll have the information about the media because you're unloading it fresh from the box. Yep. You'll have the roll length, roll width, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. With this feature turned on, the printer will request that information. Right. As it requests that information, you load the new roll of media. It'll read the barcode, right? Um, as you load the brand new roll of media, there'll be no barcode on it. But oh, what will right. happen is, so let's say you load a 100-foot roll of media and you use 50 feet of that media, right. and then you hit load to load a new roll of media. As it system backs that 50-foot remaining roll out, yeah. it'll barcode it with media type because you've told it the media type. Uh -huh. It'll barcode it indicating there's 50 feet remaining. Yeah as well as in English, okay. so you can see it. Oh, okay. And then you can go ahead and remove that media and set it with your 27 other medias, and then you have the peace of mind knowing that you can go look for the exact media that you need when Good. you need that media, and you'll know exactly how much media is remaining on that roll cool. through that function.
And you notice here, if you don't initiate a function, it'll just reset back to the, the media um, yep. main menu here. There's other functions too, but really key to it would be um, maybe the media selection you made when you load the initial roll of paper was incorrect, so you can change your paper type. But this is not a common user selection. Typically, you load your media, you specify your media type, and you just start printing. Okay. Right, but it gives you a lot of media selection options to make specific changes Good. in case you need to make those changes. I'll hit back, take me back out. Uh, ink menu is pretty straightforward. Yep, if I hit OK in the menu, you can indicate replace ink tank. Normally, for a normal user's operation, the printer would say, hey, I'm out of ink. And go ahead and replace it. You can see the light would be black or out. You just go ahead and replace that particular, particular media type, right. ink type, excuse me, and you're off and running again. Yep. You can initiate some head cleanings here, other types of functions. But what does the head cleaning do? Um, normally, I would tell the user, do not initiate any service type functions on the device unless specifically requested by the printer or you've contacted our tech support okay. and then they've requested you initiate some type of service okay. function uh, on the device. Uh, head cleaning. For lack of a better way of describing, probably just gives a little head a little kick and tries yeah. to clean it out. But normally, head maintenance and cleaning is all part of the kind of normal operation of the device without the user getting involved. Okay. Per very much in every way is very self-maintaining. Yeah. Okay. And those are, so you can see very minimal selections for, there for maintaining. Yeah. Um, a common function menu selection would be this third tab a user might go into. This is your job menu. And again, with the 6450, which is an excellent printer because it has a hard drive built into it. You can see what print jobs are queued up to print. Mm -hmm. You can go into your mailboxes, your yep. main mailbox, or stored mailbox jobs. Yep. You can print out job logs. You can pause a print, and you can obtain more information about the hard drive. So the default hard drive size that ships with the unit is 250 gigabytes, of which about 160 gigabytes available to the common average user. Here, yep. okay? um, so let's go back here, and here's a function that a user might use. So if you come to print job, you select it. If there are print jobs queued up to print, you would see them all listed here. Yep. At that point, you could select a job, you could cancel it. Mm -hmm. um, you have some other system functions related to those jobs from the print job selection here. Gotcha. Uh, store job might be a very common menu yep. selection a user might go into. So if you go into the store job, you select it. Here's your common mailbox. Yep. And then there are 29 other mailboxes. So the total of 30 mailboxes, 29 user selectable, one common box. Yep. If you drill into the common box and you ever see a plus, you hit OK. Mm -hmm. The common mailbox will have a job list, and you can print that job list out. If you drill again, you can see the last 100 jobs that have flowed into the system. Oh. When job 101 flows in, job one will disappear. Okay. Right, First in, first out eventually, but it'll hold the last 100 jobs. So you can actually come, come through and see that, oh, okay, I, think that, I might have printed that last time. Yep. So you can come here, select a particular job, drill into it. Yep. It'll tell you a little more information. It shows on plain paper, it was an 8.5 by 11 job. You can print it again, and at this point, It'll give you the job name, the print time for that job originally, a minute and 40 seconds, and number of copies. So a nice workflow function of this panel selection is to print one job. If you need four more, you can just go ahead and say, hey, give me four more. It'll tell you they'll come out in six minutes and 40 seconds. Oh, okay. Hit OK and get your get your four remaining units after you've proofed your initial job. Gotcha. So no need to waste printing 10, job, 10 pages out of your job and then find out all 10 are incorrect. Yep. Print your first one, you like it, come right back to the panel, boom, give me four more, and away you go. Got it. Okay. Or you can delete a job. Yep. So yes. And it's deleted. Okay. Yep. Good. Back here. So that's your comment box. And then your specific mailboxes, job list. You can store from the print driver. You can print to any mailbox, 1 through 29. Or by default, obviously, it flows to mailbox 0, the common mailbox. Mm -hmm. um, you can name your mailbox. Mm -hmm. You can password protect your mailbox. Mm -hmm. And jobs can be stored in there indefinitely. Okay. And most of our printers now also have. Um, DOD compliant hard drive erase. Okay. So if you're concerned about your data, your leases up, whatever the case might be, you can wipe your hard drive and have it at